This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Let's introduce in our first team, starting out team number 7407, Wired Boards. This is a team that uh, I think absolutely knocked it out of the park last year, Greg, and I can't wait to meet uh, more of them and find out what they're doing. So Wired Boards, why don't you uh, introduce yourselves, let us know what you do on the team, and we'll hop right into what you have to offer. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, my name is Jackson. I'm our Open Alliance guy for 7407, and oh, here we go. Hi, I'm Ash. I'm a junior, and I have worked on the Cube Intake. I'm Garrett. I'm also a junior, um, and I work mainly on the claw intake. Hi, uh, I'm Sherry. Uh, I work mainly on our shoulder and elevator designs. I'm William. I'm a, I'm a junior, and I worked on the claw Well, 7407 Wired Boards, uh, I know we have a screen show. We'll be talking about uh, some things you have been going on, but how are you feeling about the uh, uh, Charged Up Challenge so far? Are you guys excited? I mean, yeah, I think uh, jumping into this, we are really excited to be participating in, I mean, everyone like on the team hasn't, like this is our first pick and place ever for everyone on the team right now. So we're all really excited to jump into it. And earlier in the season, like over the summer, I think we also included some things in our open lines post about like preparing for the season, preparing for like elevator games, preparing for pick and place. So yeah, we're really excited to be jumping into this year. Well, let's hop into what you have to talk about today. And uh, uh, Runnister, you're going to be uh, talking about your floor cube intake, your wrist and claw, elevator, shoulder, and climber. Uh, so what are you going to start us out with? I'm going to uh, – I'm starting um, with the floor intake. Um, so we have a similar system to the one we used last year. It's going to be a four-bar intake. And we chose to do uh, a one-inch compression on the cube. And in our CAD sketching, as you can see, we made them circles because of – how um, the cubes were, and they were basically the same in the CAD. Um, we started from a locked down position, but we knew we needed to get to, and we worked backwards from that, playing with the geometries. That way we could avoid our A-frame and our gears that powered our drivetrain, but also staying within our frame. Um, we used a pneumatic cylinder to help power the intake. And um, this is our finished CAD model. We used uh, two inch wheels and um, Beckenham wheels, thank you. And we used lightning on the metal plating. That way we can reinforce the polycarb. We used a two inch stroke pneumatic, so, and a bend in the lower arm. That way, when it is in its fully down position, it'll lock and our um, pneumatic doesn't push too far. So looking, um, at, uh, I've got a question real quick on your intake. When, when you all are looking at it, um, uh, I know this is what, what we're showing where you're at so far. What are maybe some things that didn't work uh, for wired boards that you tried out or uh, were ones that were like, hey, this isn't the right direction for us to go? Yeah, so at first we were thinking of having something similar to like the claw where we'd have two side arms with wheels that would suck in the cube. But we realized something like that would get in the way a lot of our claw that's trying to grab the cube. And we also tried different compressions to make sure that no matter what inflation the ball would be that's like within the range that is allowed our ball would our like our cube would not pop or wouldn't get sucked up properly so the compression was a big attribute and how the cube would be intaked so yeah just and adding up to that um the problem with the claw or the the idea with the claw would be that it would also intake tipped cones but um we thought that the added complexity wouldn't really be worth it, especially because our claw uh, that's on the arm, kind of confusing, um, can already picked up, pick up tipped cones as well. So, so did you find um, that the um, the vectored intake wheels did a good job centering these inflated uh, balls? Uh, like... We found that them alone did not do a great job, but them um, alternated with the regular two inch wheels helped a lot with how to vector it properly. Cool. 
So, so we, we uh, on the screen share, um, we see a picture of uh, your full CAD. And so I, I just, I, you know, asking high level questions here that I, I'm assuming you're going to get to. So you have an intake for your, the ball, but you also have a different intake for the cone. So can you explain a little bit about that robot or is that jumping ahead a little bit? Um, I mean, so our idea here was that our, our arm had the intake that would be able to intake cones from the double station and place them. Um, but that intake, uh, as we'll get into later, kind of struggled with the cubes. So the idea is that this, this uh, wrist would be able to rotate our claw around so it could pick up the cubes that are coming in from the roller, which can get the, the cubes very quickly and without a lot of driver precision. Yes. Got it. So your so your 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 strategy at this point, and I'm just trying to I want to make sure that that everybody's clear on this. Um, is so you're going to directly pick up off your arm, right, off of the station for the the cones, but then you're going to do a handoff for the the cubes, right? Yes. So currently our plan was uh so cones will mainly at least for maybe our first competition since it's week one and we don't have that much time and we think we want to prioritize programming on the arms and everything a bit, that we will be primarily picking up codes solely from the double station for through the portals. Whereas for cubes, we thought it would be nice to have a way to intake it from the floor without much driver precision, just because we know that most teams will be relying on the portal for codes. So if our partners want us to be focusing on cubes, we can get it from the single station so that we're kind of out of each other's way a little bit and there's not as much clutter in the double station. But uh, theoretically, the claw should also be able to directly pick up cubes from the portal. Yeah, that's that's a really cool, a really cool thinking from a strategic perspective because I think that you're thinking about what your alliance um, is might look like in terms of like being able to, you know, how you're gonna your robot's gonna work. I think that a lot of teams early on in the season are just trying to build a robot that just is optimal for doing the task. And they recognize like, yeah, well, there's only so much space in the pickup area. There's so much, so only so much space on this side. So I think it's cool that you're thinking about how like, oh, if they're really great at picking up cones, we're going to go do the, the cubes in a different way. And that's, I think that's really great strategic thinking. Let's keep diving more into your robot. What do you have next to show us? Um, so next we were going to talk about the claw intake uh, in our prototyping process. Um, next slide. So first we started with a passive grabber, kind of just like the RA 3D. Um, in the interest of time, I don't think we need to watch the videos. The problem we realized is if we grab too low, it can actually flip the cone the wrong way. And it also requires a lot of driver precision. So we kind of quickly moved away from that to our next intake, which is a kind of, uh, next slide, which is a kind of clawed device. Um, and the first time we tried to use mechanum wheels, but we found that those didn't have really enough grip on the cone. Um, even under a lot of compression. And so we tried some flex wheels and those worked pretty well, but we uh, realized that they weren't able to like flip the cone as well. And we also wanted to be lighter. So we went to do a belted intake, which is the next slide. Um, and this worked really well. So essentially we have belts on top and bottom and four inch diameter thrifty wheels to kind of get, grab the cone. Um, so if you play the next video there, um, we can actually see that it's able to pick up tipped cones and or reorient them to the right direction so that by flipping it over our robot with our pivot point on the elevator, we can actually score them without having to readjust them too much. So that's kind of because the pressure is uh, higher or the or it's, there's more compression where the cone is larger. So the belts kind of bring it up. And that's kind of what we're going to go put on the robot. Greg, what do you think of uh, that type of intake? That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's really cool. Um, I, I love the to see the iterations that you've gone through with different types of wheels and different types of it. But I mean, you know, I, I always kind of say this to the kids on my team too. It's like whatever works works, and I think that you have to kind of knock out about a the billion different things that have issues so you can get to something cool that works. And so I I love where you guys are at with this. I mean, it's very it's complex but it's also simple and if it does the job that you want it to do then it's it's awesome uh, so yeah next i think we had the um the elevator and the pivot yeah do you want to quickly cover the wrist or um okay the wrist is pretty simple it just uses some uh double helical gears to pivot around the end of the elevator so 
And yeah, you can see its range of motion there. It's pretty good. We probably won't end up using all of that, but it's nice to have. That's very cool. Is that a is that a three D printed double herringbone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're in herringbone, not helical. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you want to go to the next slide, or yeah? <laughs> okay, so next up we have kind of the only part of the robot that's constructed at the moment, which is the A frame that locates with a shoulder that will essentially pivot our entire elevator around. And um, basically, for this design, we decided that. Uh, we decided to go for an A-frame versus, I know some teams went for like pink arms and stuff because of our own manufacturing capabilities. We didn't feel very comfortable trying to wire and cable everything through. So we were like, hey, a pivot sounds pretty good. And as Jared has mentioned before, once our claw grabs the cone, even if it's tipped upside down, we can kind of like rotate it all the way through our robot to square it onto the opposite side. And I think one interesting aspect that we did put on our robot that was kind of unique was our use of basically a disc brake mount from you know regular mountain bikes that will be mounted around this region and in the CAD is just represented by a uh, gray, uh, gray disc. So essentially that will allow us to lock our uh, shoulder in place whenever we are not actively rotating our entire elevator. And that allows us to one kind of save some energy not having to keep that motor continuously running so that you know the shoulder stays in place and two it allows us to have a more aggressive gearing so that we can essentially have faster acceleration without suffering the consequences of potentially breaking a gear or a motor or suffering too much backlashes and also speaking of backlashes i think my team is planning to uh, lock tight some of our gears onto our hex shafts <laughs> so we can avoid backlashes but we'll see how that pans out for us <laughs> yeah Um, I know you got your uh, climber coming up next, uh, or is there more to talk about in regards to your elevator too? Yeah, I mean, elevator is pretty uh, simple. It's just a thrifty elevator and we uh, kind of shrinked it down a little bit. The only thing to note, I think, is that 3D printed block at the bottom of our two by two, and it just helps us shrink all the cable tensioning. But yeah, climber? Sure, so the climber, what it's attempting to solve is that three robots can't get onto the charge station at the same time at least not easily. And so we're using an assisted climb that enables a last second engaged climb on directly onto an, another engaged alliance partner. And so one of the uh, upsides of the system is that it's fast, allowing us to score points right up until the end of the game and we'll climb very quickly. And it's also good because it's self-reliant. So we don't have to worry about if our alliance partners are gonna be big or small because we can climb on any of them. And how the climbing sequence is going to work is that we have two carbon fiber rods. They're kind of like um, forklift arms that are going to, we're going to line up. Yeah, like those. And so we're going to line up with the charge station with April tags, and then we're going to put them down. So just the tips um, touch the charge station, and we're going to forklift under our lines partners. Then we're going to use a winch to winch yourselves up. And at this point, the robot is contacting only the charge station and the alliance partner, which is also fully supported by the charge station. And because we're below the charge station, um, it actually lowers the CG of the charge station, meaning that it becomes easier to balance. Uh, next slide. And so I have a video showing how it works. So this is the deployment of the climb where there's two pneumatic cylinders, one on each side um, that you can see they, they let the um, arms go down and then on the back there's actually a winch which allows the actual climb to occur so that's a better look at the winch where um, you get two pulleys and they get winched together and that um, second part is usually held up by elastic but um, the winch overcomes that and is able to climb and that's what the robot will look like when it's climbed. That, that's certified badass guys sincerely that's really that cool is. I can't wait I can't wait to see that uh, in action. I, I'm I'm sitting here like, this is the first one of these I've seen. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I, I don't have anything really to add to it. Just, it's just awesome. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when does uh, assembly start of this? Cause I can't wait to see it. Um, yeah, I think once we complete the arms then we'll start the climber. Yeah, things are kind of coming together at their own pace. Like all the parts for the wrist and the claw have kind of come together. Um, so we're, Get to start assembling that i think tomorrow right so. yeah i think the elevator is also done so we'll focus on probably getting the superstructure done first because 
it's more programming heavy. So we want to give that to our programming team as soon as possible. And then the climate is also coming together. Well, Wired Boars, uh, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us more about your team, your robot. What a great way to end uh, the show. It's such a cool thing. We can't wait to see uh, what's coming up next uh, for your team with that as well. So uh, we wish you best of luck. Before we uh, let you go, anything uh, that you want to wrap up with uh, about your team before we see you in three more weeks? Um, oh, yeah. And the CAD for all of this can be um, – on the Onshape CAD can be uh, – there's a link to it on our Open Alliance forum and on Chief Delphi. So uh, feel free to check that out um, and, you know, play around with it your, yourself. <laughs> awesome. Wired Boris, thank you so much. Good luck uh, the rest of the way. We'll see you in just uh, three short weeks. Good luck, everybody. Good thank, luck. You. thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.